Hey guys, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and in this video, I'm going to show you the four ways to program drums in Reason. So, if you've always wondered the best way to go about drum programming your beats in Reason, I'm going to show you those here today. And if you stick around till the end, I'll also show you a fifth bonus way of sort of programming your drums using AI tools to kind of do some of the work for you. One thing I'm going to say is that in this video, I don't really consider the idea of recording drums in live and then maybe editing it, editing them to be the same as drum programming. To me, drum programming is like when you type in notes or set a pattern or something like that. And then from there you create your drums. So I'm not going to do any finger drumming in this because I don't really consider that drum programming. That's making a beat certainly, but that's not the programming side. You're going to see me use a few different devices, a few different utilities here. Um, if you want to know more about all the devices in Reason, I've got a free cheat sheet for Reason that covers all of these cool tools you can use, and it'll help you pick the right one much faster. There's a link down below to grab it. Now let's look into the ways of doing drum programming in Reason. So we're going to start with the most old school way of doing drums in Reason using CV gate and the matrix pattern sequencer. This is <laughs> like, uh, still really can be useful for things. I've done a whole video that dives deep into CV and reason. So if you want to learn more about CV, go check out actually, actually two videos, um, go check those out. But for the basics, what you use is basically this sequencer called matrix, which can have various patterns. You see, this is the grid from left to right. And these are the notes and this is the velocity. And this controls essentially one gate out. So whenever this tells the gate to turn on, it will then shoot out of the matrix and into the gate in section of the kick. And that will create a kick. So if we hit play here, you notice there's two, two hits, one here, one here. We can add a few more. And let's just do that. You'll see how easy this is. So now we kind of got a four on the floor with a little ending bit. And if I wanted to do a different pattern, you could go over here and yeah, let's just go with this. Sure. And then you could automate all of that in the sequencer to have it choose between the poor, uh, the patterns, you can change the resolution, add some shuffle. Um, and let's say we want to add another one for the snare. We'll, we'll just go right click here. Actually, we'll hold down shift because we don't want it to automatically route under utilities. You'll see the matrix pattern sequencer. I'm holding down shift. So it's not routed to anything with my new matrix too. I'll hit tab to flip things over, go from the, the gate CV of the new matrix to the gate in on channel two, which is snare drum. And we shall yeah, have a shuffle like that, sure. Which you'll notice the velocity or the loudness, the height of this um, lane here also affects the volume or the velocity of the hits. So it can be really helpful for programming in groove. So that is the first way of doing drums, programming and reason using something like a matrix pattern sequencer, tying in the CV voltage, and then programming different patterns. And once you send them to the track, you'll want to be sure to turn pattern mode off. The next way of programming drums in reason is also pretty old school. It is the redrum pattern sequencer, you've got 10 channels across the top representing 10 instruments on a drum kit, you could say, and each one of them has 16 steps. So we'll just do a simple drum beat again, four on the floor here. You also have the ability to choose velocity of the, or the dynamics of the hit. So we'll make the first and the fourth louder, and then we'll use the snare on the two and the four. And if we hit run, 
And of course I have turned flam on, which is not what we want to do, but flam basically creates a multi hit like you were hearing there. Um, and we'll turn the dynamics down. So you can see you kind of have more gran granularity, a little bit more control here uh, with the redrum. So if we hit play, And then let's say we want to get some hi-hat in that. We'll just go. A really simple beat. But you see how this is kind of a bit faster, A, because you don't have to plug in a bunch of matrices. Um, second, because you can just kind of quickly jump between the patterns. You've got a little bit, you've got the ability to choose flam. Um, and then if you want another pattern, you can always just switch around. The cool thing about this, let's say, well, A, you can change any of the samples here. It does not need to sound like this. Um, but if you wanted to, you could also take the gate out of each of these and use it to trigger other drums. So if we go back down to the Kong, uh, number nine is where our hi-hat is, so that's gonna hit a lot. We could have you instead go over to, I don't know, we'll see whatever this does. The gate in, oh, come on gate out to gate in. And now if I hit run on this redrum, it's going to start triggering the Kong. And similarly, actually, if we go back to the Kong, there's the gate out for all of these. So we could also have these trigger other parts of the Kong or these could trigger the redrum, whatever. Uh, that's why CV can be quite powerful when you actually get things going. So if we were to hit now run on the snare, the kibasa is also triggering. If you hit run on the snare, the kibasa is also triggering. These are all decent ways of doing drum programming in Reason. The next way is to use the step sequencer. Um, I'm going to add a Dr. Octorex drum loop here. And in case you didn't know, you can actually, if you hit play, Right, it runs it as a loop, but you can actually also select all of these slices individually and chop up the loop and make it your own. So let's go down to the sequencer. We've got the acoustic drums. We'll go over here. Turn on loop and solo this guy. And now we'll draw in a region. And we've got slice one through 20. 20, well, there probably are not that many slices, so let's just. So let's just do, again, we're not programming good beats here, we're just learning how to program drum beats in Reason. So one thing to note about, uh, especially if you're using Dr. Octorex, is that it is only monophonic, so you can't trigger multiple notes at the same time. But if we were to hit play, and we gotta turn loop playback on, otherwise it will keep playing the loop. And because we're using such tight chopped samples, it kind of gives you that cool groove sound. All right, we like if we wanted to. So that is yet another way of doing drum programming in Reason. You can use any instrument and you can just draw it right in on the sequencer. Finally, this is my, I'm gonna show you my favorite way of doing drum programming in Reason, and that is using the drum sequencer player. And what I really like about it, A, it has some features that you just don't see elsewhere, but I find it very compelling just visually to have all of the instruments laid up vertically. So we've got the kick here. We'll just draw in the snare closed hi-hat open hi-hat over here claps whatever and if we hit run so you see how fast that is you've got shuffle you actually can choose the percent of the shuffle you can individually dial in the velocity pretty darn quickly so you see this velocity channel here so now, 
you have the ability to choose if notes repeat, kind of like in a trap style. So let's just do this. Sorry. And you also have the ability to change the probability of a note, meaning it won't play every time you it triggers. So let's say we've got this, uh, we'll just go to this closed hi-hat thing. Right now it's going to play 96% of the time, but if we put it down to like 30%, it's not going to play every time. which can, especially if you've got a few of these set up, it can really create this kind of dynamic groove that's always changing and evolving because it's not always going to be the same thing. You can also slide notes to be, by selecting slide, to be a little ahead or behind the groove, which can really help. So yeah, this is what I really like to use and then you just click send to track and it'll go. You can do multiple patterns. Um, this And with this, you don't automatically, you don't need to do any CV routing. You just drag it on top of the instrument you want to control and it will automatically handle the routing. Um, so it's just much faster to get set up. Similarly, I'll, and I'll show you how to install it right now because we're going to add the fifth and bonus way of doing programming drums, which is with beat map. I don't love Beatmap, but it can be fun and inspiring. It's an algorithmic drum player. Essentially, you see how I just dra dragged it on top and now it's going to control it. It uses algorithms. You can choose how much kick and snare. Uh, there's some off beats and then you can kind of choose where it goes from here and there. You can choose shuffle, but I just find it a little too unpredictable to be useful nonetheless. So you can just you can just kind of mess around and find something you like at which point you could record it to track and then tweak it to your own needs uh, so these are the four or five ways to program drums in reason that i know of maybe i left some out if so please leave a comment below share how you like to program drums in reason and don't forget to check out that free reason cheat sheet download it it will certainly help you pick the right drum instrument the right programmer or utility and it'll speed up your workflow thanks so much for watching and also like and subscribe bye